This is the electric power steering rack of, off of 2014 two-wheel drive F-150. In their infinite wisdom, they put a rubber belt in here to provide the power. And I'm not gonna show you how to take this off. Hell, if you can't take the rack off, you shouldn't be screwing with this. And I know you can do it on the truck, but we chose not to do that because we wanted to get it clean. And I just don't like working underneath the car. And we took this cover off. And when you take that cover off, you need to get an impact driver. And if you don't know what an impact driver is, you don't need to be doing this either because you'll strip the heads out on all these little chicken shit bolts they got on. All right after we got the cover off, this was filled with all the all the rubber belt dust in there and we've blown most of it out and there's still a piece of the belt wrapped around the gear up here. So before you take this apart, now look at it real close. This is a, this is a locking ring and it's got a tang on it right there that goes right there in that slot and it's gotta be in place before you, before you lock all this down when you're putting it back together. So pay attention to where that is and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm gonna put a cut right there to there and mark where that is so I know where the preload needs to be. All right, you've got two notches in that nut. Just get your screwdriver, or none of our spanners would fit that. So I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and I'm gonna tap that thing out, but be careful. Don't knock a bunch of crap off in there and get it in that bearing. Okay, take my hammer. I'm just gonna tap that out. Doesn't take much, you just gotta get the pressure from the preload off that bearing. And then just turn it out. I think I'm gonna take that bearing out of there if I can at all help it. I'm gonna fish that fish that belt out there out of there. There we go. There's the belt. Stripped and broke. Okay. Now I'm gonna boil that crap out of there. Okay, this is a picture of the teeth on the new belt. Those teeth, I would call this a little bitty Gilmer belt. And those teeth are very small. They're probably not, they're probably not having to turn a lot, but if you can see down in there, let's see if I can get a picture of it. See down in there, you can see the teeth that it rides on. Those teeth, there's a bunch of belt crap in all those little teeth. So, I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna spin that thing around and I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a pick down there and scrape all that crap out of all those teeth so we don't have any problems with this belt riding up on crap down in the, down in the bottom of the tooth. Well, you can see this, but see me scraping that, run that pick down each one of those teeth. See that crap coming out? That was a good piece right there. All that is old rubber and dust and crap. And if you don't get that out, hell, some of that stuff is about half the half the thickness of one of the teeth. And what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is, it's going to ride on top of those 
on top of that crap in the base in the in the area between those teeth and it might knock it out eventually probably not but it's going to change the tension on the belt when it finally comes out so spin it all around and get it out good okay i got the gear all cleaned up it takes forever and i probably should have taken the tensioner out before i started cleaning it and made it a whole lot easier on myself but sometimes we're not about making shit easier i ended up having to take it out because the bearing race right here is bigger than the gear and i had to take had to take the idler out so i'd have enough room to get the belt down in there and get it seated in the pulley so i can get it over the over the motor shaft there and then i'll put the the tensioner back in and adjust it okay i've got everything cleaned up and it is a tight tight fit there's a flange on both sides of the gear, on the gear that's on the motor. And it's just, it barely makes it around that. And you've got to run, you've got to run the gear with the bearings on both sides. It's got a recirculating ball in there, but you've got to run, you got to pull that out just a little bit to where you can get this belt to line up. Cause if not, it gets that belt at too high of an angle and you can't get it over, you can't get it over right there. You can't get it over the drive gear on the motor. Now, I haven't got it all the way down, but I wanted to show you what it looked like when I get it started. Now, I got a piece of wood and pushed on the edge of that belt. Don't get rough with that belt because you'll knock the teeth off of it and you'll crimp it and then you'll be done. You'll have to get another $100 belt. But that's where I'm at right now and do not take this apart. Okay. I've got the nut screwed back down. You can see right there, I put a nick in it on the housing and the nut, and I got it right back where it was. We didn't change any bearing in it, so there shouldn't be any difference in where it was and where it is now. And some people pack that bearing with grease, but you know, in all honesty, that thing only rotates one, two, three. It only rotates about 20 times lock to lock. And the tensioner, we put a mark. We put a mark from bolt to bolt. And we just got the mark back where it was. You don't want to get, you don't get that belt as tight as an E string on a guitar, but it's got just a little bit of little bit of give to it, but it's back where it was originally. And the belt feels good to me. But like I said, I didn't pack that bearing because I didn't want that grease to fall out of it into that belt. So we're gonna clean the surface up and I'm gonna use Aviation Permatex on it because it's got an O-ring in the cover. O-ring looks good, it's not squashed out. And we're gonna get that Get that lock washer put back in there that locks that nut in place. And then put the screws back in it, put it in the truck. I know you old guys like us, this probably won't bother you, but this will make some people's heads fly off to see somebody use an aviation form of gasket. But it was good stuff when I was a kid and it's still good stuff. Use whatever you want. This is what I'm using. There's a few th other things I wanted to let you know about working on this. The way to troubleshoot it is you have to have the tires on the ground and have somebody turn the key on and try to turn it side to side and get a stethoscope or a screwdriver and put it to your ear right up there where the motor housing is on there. And you can hear the motor turning on, going one way, turning on, going the other way. And if it doesn't have any power, that's most likely just like ours, the belt was broke. Now, getting it off is another story. It's got two big bolts that hold it on the truck. Well, Ford uses this stuff, this blue Loctite, and it is a bear to get off. And you're on your own on that. If, you, if, you have, if you're doing this job and have trouble, just write me and I'll tell you how we did it. The other thing is we got the belt off of Amazon. I couldn't find anywhere else. Rock Auto lists the kit 
It comes with the belt and the little O-ring for the cover and all that business, but they didn't have any. So it took two days to get it from Amazon. And the one from 10 to 14 is one and 15 to something is another size belt. Uh, the 15 and up is actually a little bit easier to do because the, the gear, the big gear that the belt rides over is not down in a hole. It's out in the open in that cover is is where the gear goes up into so it's a little bit easier to do but i'd still take it off the car because it's it's just it's just easier to do it up on the bench you know the reason we went ahead and did this the this customer bought this truck and it's a it's actually a pretty low mileage truck it's got like 72 74 thousand miles on it, and this happened to it and he's just gonna he's just gonna take a little bit of a loss and get rid of it but he didn't want to take the loss of of not having power because that really that really kicked the sales price in the ass. But uh, I found a brand new one of these it was like twenty two hundred dollars. Rebuilt ones were like twelve hundred dollars of my cost, and this was this ended up costing him about five hundred and seventy four dollars to take it off, get the belt, replace it, and then put it back. So it was a it was a little bit of a learning experience for us. And it was, it was a whole lot cheaper than any other thing he could have done with it. There were several other videos doing this on, on YouTube, and I, I would suggest don't just stop looking at mine. Look at some of the other ones because they might have a little something on there that I might have missed, and I might have a little something on mine that they might have missed. But I appreciate all the guys that made videos that we watched before we did this, so that's why I made this one. Thanks for watching.